Now let's talk about how to measure inequality. Now, the main way we're gonna measure inequality is this thing called the Gini coefficient, G-I-N-I, -I, and it's always between zero and one, where one means it's totally unequal of a society, and zero actually means perfect equality. Everyone has the exact same amount of money, your Gini coefficient's zero, and so the higher the Gini coefficient, the more unequal the society is. Now, before that, we have to talk about what's called the Lorenz curve, and so using the Lorenz curve, we'll be able to calculate the Gini coefficient pretty easily. So, the Lorenz curve, here's what it's looking at. On the one axis, it's saying what percentage of the population, and on the other axis, it's saying what percentage of wealth, of the whole country's wealth, does that population have. So, simple example, what if all of the wealth in the whole country was with just one person, right? Well, in that case, even the bottom 99% of the population have no wealth, so as we'll see, we're gonna, in that case, get 100% Gini coefficient, but we'll get there, actually. Let's look at an example first, a more normal example. So, let's say we have this, uh, this breakdown into quartiles is what it's called. This just means that the bottom 25% of people have 5% of the wealth. So in that case, this red line over here is called the line of, uh, you know, uh, the 45 degree line, or the line of perfect equality. So what that means is if this is 25 on the line, this will also be 25%. But in our example here, the bottom 25% own only, five, only have 5% 5 of the income. So on our Lorentz curve, when x is 25%, our y is only going to be 5%. Now, if we're looking at the bottom 50% of the population, that's this group and this group. So that's going to be t 5 plus this, this next group of 25% have 10% of the wealth. So that's going to add up to 15%. So the bottom 50% of people, both of these guys, you know, have 15% of the wealth. So notice that's still way below what the line of perfect equality would have been. But yeah, that's 15%. So, so far, we have this point, this point, and then the bottom 75%, that's these three, this, these, these 25%, these 25%, and these 25%. So, these bottom 75% of people have 5 plus 10 plus 35. That's 50% of the wealth. So, they have, you know, 50% of the wealth. Notice again, still less than what the line of perfect equality would have been because, hey, if everyone was equal, the bottom 75% of people would have 75% of the wealth. So again, that's what the red line is telling us. But again, that's not the case in this society. The bottom 75% have 50% of the wealth. And then finally, when we get to the full one, meaning 100% of people, that's adding this other 50%. That's 100% of the well, so 100% of the people always have to have 100% of the wealth. So when you're making your Lorenz curve, 0% of people always have 0% of wealth, and 100% of people always have 100% of wealth. So it's always going to share these two endpoints in common with the line of perfect equality. But as we saw, we have these points. So our graph ended up looking like this. So this is our Lorenz curve, is this line. Now we can kind of break this up, this triangle, we can kind of break it up into area A, that's everything over here, and then this, the re remaining part, this is area B. So, notice here's the thing, if everyone was truly equal, the Lorentz curve would be the line of perfect equality, because hey, if we lived in a society where all these were 25%, then we would have gotten exactly these values on the line, right? Then the black line and the red line would be the same, and this area A would be zero. There would be really no area over there. So, in that case, here's how you measure the Gini coefficient now. Now that we have the Lorentz curve, we broke it down into this area A and area B, the Gini coefficient is simply area A divided by what, by what A and B add up to. So A out of A and B. So it's kind of like a percentage, this much portion out of this much, A plus B. Now here's the thing. If, if you count, you know, the percentages as like, you know, 100% is 1, well then this whole box is like 1 by 1, right? So the area is 1. So this triangle, A plus B, is really always just 0.5. It's really just 1 half base times height, so 1 half 1 times 1. So it's really A over A plus B really turns into A over, and then A plus B is 0.5,
which dividing by 0.5 is the same thing as multiplying by 2. So you could also just use 2a. Once you find the area a, you know, as some number between 0 and 0.5, obviously, then it's going to be twice that is the Gini coefficient. It's really just that out of the total. Either way is fine. You'll get the same thing. Now, here's the thing. If we were to look at some of the extreme examples, like I talked about, uh, if you do have a society where everyone has the same amount of money, then your Gini coefficient is zero. So zero uh, means perfect equality because in that case, the black and red lines are the same one and so area A is zero. So zero out of 0.5 is still zero. So that's why there's you know, no inequality. Now, basically, long story short, the more your line goes closer to the edges, the more unequal your society is. The most extreme example is, let's say, the bottom 99.999% of people have zero dollars. So they clearly, everybody has 0% of the wealth, and just that last one guy has everything. So when you do 100% of the population, you still have 100% of the wealth. Your Lorenz curve in that case is basically almost this, this, this shape, this triangle almost, right, without this line. So really just this part. So really area A is, is the whole A plus B. So really A out of A plus B is 100%. It's just one, and that's perfect inequality because basically all the wealth is just with one person and everybody else has zero. So that would be the other extreme. So in general, just remember that, you know, the more closer to that extreme point, the more unequal you are, the closer to the line of perfect equality, the more equal you are, the less your Gini coefficient. And in general, one thing to keep in mind is this really doesn't tell you uh, the wealth level, meaning how many, how much money you actually have. It doesn't tell you whether you have millions or billions or so if you have two different countries, you can't really compare how much money is in one versus the other if all you know is the Gini coefficient. That's just saying, within that country, how much wealth is concentrated with just the top. That's what Jeannie's measuring.